Welcome to the Online Course Masters Show, where we learn from the best online course creators how to better create and sell our very own courses. I'm your host, Phil Ebner, and today I chat with a watercolor illustrator, Amaryllis Henderson, who is just dominating it on Skillshare. She has over 15,000 students, has taught over 11 courses, and she's gonna walk us through how she did it coming up. Visit onlinecoursemasters.com for show notes to watch the video version of this episode and see an archive of all our past guests. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. The one thing you can do for me is leave a review for the show, which helps us expand to an even larger audience. Thanks, and let's get straight to the interview. Hi, Amaryllis. Thank you so much for being part of the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Phil. I'm honored. Yeah, I've had a lot of people on who have been teaching on Skillshare and uh, everyone seems to be interested in having some success on Skillshare and just with their own skills. And because you're an artist, there's lots of people out there listening who have a skill like art or something creative and they would love to teach online courses to make a little bit of passive income. So for people who don't know you, can you share a little bit more about your background information and what you've been doing before you started creating online courses? Yeah, I'm an illustrator uh, and that's what I went to school for. I, uh, I did some books and then I got into graphic design after some good advice to get a steady job before you get married so you don't have as many fights uh, the first <laughs> couple of years. But then that kind of burnt me out creatively in that um, my job is still, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with being somewhat of a yes man, but it just, you, you get into a churn and it killed me kind of. So um, I didn't paint for two or three years and then I started doing it on my own. And then without knowing it, I basically started my illustration career again, uh, via Etsy and things like that. Now, the way I got into teaching was really through requests. People would ask me, how do you do this? How do you do that? And, uh, I looked around, I saw that I needed a massive following on YouTube. Um, and I didn't think I was going to get there. So I started looking at sites like Skillshare. And what I really liked about Skillshare was the kind of creative professional vibe. And I felt like it resonated with my brand, so to speak. Got it. So yeah. who were, I got a couple of questions about just the background and it's funny because I, I graduated from college and I studied film and TV production and I kind of bounced around between full-time work and freelance mm-hmm. work and mm-hmm. my wife now, uh, but my girlfriend then it was always kind of worrisome for her, like this whole freelance yeah. lifestyle and yeah. and even for me, it was I would get stressed because it was like hard to find enough work to uh, mm-hmm. just be consistent. So yeah, I was bouncing mm-hmm. around from full time to part time, and now mm-hmm. I'm doing uh, my online teaching on online business full time. But it also allows me to do film work and video editing on the side. Uh, mm-hmm. So it seems to be like a cool balance that people can find. Um, mm-hmm. So where was this graphic design job that you had? Uh, I worked doing magazine ads first, just mm-hmm. local magazines. Uh, we were living in Dallas at the time. And then I worked uh, doing the graphic design at our church. And then I worked at a book publisher doing cool. similar mm-hmm. things. But all in Dallas. Um, nice. Kind of feel sheepish saying exactly who since I said that. That's <laughs> okay. No, you don't, have to, you don't have to say that. That's fine. I, I understand. Yeah. And you, you were saying that people were asking you about your art and asking you to teach them how to do different things or how you do different things. Who, who were these people and how are they asking you? So, uh, I kind of gained a small following through Facebook, which then turned into Instagram. Uh, and Instagram is definitely my go-to right now, uh, reaching out to people as far as marketing, as far as just, I don't know, getting feedback. I, I really like the community there. Uh, so it was there and, um, Other illustrators were doing periscopes. I did a few. Uh, I don't feel totally comfortable with it because it's like, I don't know. I like being able to paint and then do a voiceover. Mm -hmm. Uh, Talking and answering questions while painting is kind of a lot to bite off. Yeah, that's something I've heard from a couple other guests. They do it differently. Some people actually like the live kind of walking through while they 
design and then mm-hmm. other people like doing the whole thing first and then doing mm-hmm. the voiceover afterwards. Um, yeah. So I want to get into the whole course creation process and your style, but can we sure. fast forward a little bit till now? <laughs> and um, I, I found you because Skillshare wrote a blog article about you. And um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you mind me sharing the numbers that they mentioned in that blog article, no, uh, that's but okay. you were at this time in May, they launched this blog article. They had said you were earning $1,200 a month, had earned over $12,000 to date. And it had, mm-hmm. it seemed like it had been a little less than a year that you'd been on Skillshare. That's pretty yeah. exciting. Um, can you share just yeah. how, how life-changing this has been for you and maybe a little bit more about where you are today? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe how life-changing it's been, honestly. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I've said uh, that's not me. And then I'll do it. And it turns out to be, and, and Skillshare is definitely one of those things. Um, so how I started, I started with the teach challenge, which they put out every month. And, uh, I knew that I wanted to do Skillshare and I'm kind of competitive. So I thought this is going to be a great way to just jump in. And I, I won, which I really didn't expect. Um, and I think it, at the time it was like one year of membership, on Skillshare, which I think now the prizes are like way better. <laughs> I'm not jealous at all. So, um, yeah, that was in, I told somebody wrong the other day, August of 2014, 15. I think 15. It said on the blog 15. 2015. Yeah. So not yeah. that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and since that blog was written, I've made twice as much nice. and it's just really snowballed to where, um, I'm doing illustration cause I love it and not, because I really need to right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I do feel like those two things feed each other. And I think that's probably what a lot of instructors feel that you have to get better at your craft in order to be able to teach it. And when you teach it, then you want to progress in your craft and they feed each other. And so it doesn't feel like I have a bunch of plates spinning. They, they really do coincide. And if I post something on Instagram that people really like, then they're like, how did you do that? And I'm thinking, Oh, that's, that's a class I could do. Easy. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So what's your kind of day-to-day life like balancing your just freelance work or just creative work, maybe that you're just doing yeah. for fun and then creating online classes and building your online business? Yeah. Um, I am also a stay-at-home mom. So my work hours are Monday through Saturday mornings, except for Wednesday. So I have Wednesday and Sunday off. And, uh, that's pretty much when preschool and Nana take over okay. and, uh, that that's worked out pretty well. Um, with Skillshare, I know that I need to be recording my classes, uh, when the kids aren't here so that it's quiet, I can think whatever, uh, with illustration, I can kind of do it on the fly and, and I can fit that in. I do have certain days that I do certain things like on Tuesdays and Fridays, I tend to check in on Skillshare, check in on projects, Mm -hmm. things like that. And then class production, I probably spend about uh, 12 to 15 hours a month on production. And uh, I do a lot of commenting on projects because I think that's what people want, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they want that support. So, So, um, that's how I balance it out. Kind of like on separate days, I do separate things. Nice. That's, I think that's what I need to do better is segmenting my days because I feel like, uh, while most of my courses and engagement is on Udemy, but I also have my courses on Skillshare and some Mm -hmm. other platforms, but I find myself every day checking questions and student submissions and it takes a long time every, if I do it every day. And um, some, I think most students would forgive me if I chose like, okay, I'm going to do this once a week. Um, there's a yeah. couple of students who have commented, especially recently, like, oh, are you going to get back to me? And, and they posted uh, like yesterday and I'm like, yes, I will so give me that's a couple so days. But, um, but I like that yeah. idea of kind of segmenting your work. Um, how, how many classes are you, do you know how many classes you have and how often are you posting new courses? I have 11 classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that averages out to every six weeks or so. Nice. Post a new class. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. what what kind of tools and equipment are you using to create your courses? So um, a lot of my equipment is new. I was using just my MacBook, iMovie, QuickTime, um, the microphone on the MacBook uh, for a good 
eight months. Uh And then I started to play with um, getting some lights. Uh, My studio here is like a long hallway and all the lights, all the windows are on this side. So I got lights. What did I do? I got a GoPro. Um, So I usually have my GoPro over my desk. Um, I will set up my phone to watch me in case I have anything really important to say. And uh, what else do I use? And for your microphone, you got your Blue Yeti. That would be the biggest complaint I've gotten about my classes, um, the sound. And I, so I was using the laptop and then I started using the snowball. And I think that thing just like bopped around too much. I recorded an entire class with it. And then when I went to edit, it just sounded horrible, just shrieky, horrible. So then I did my voiceovers with the laptop. I got complaints about that. And I finally got this Yeti. So. Yeah, I think that's a good option and probably the first piece of equipment I would suggest people to get is a yeah. better microphone. It's so important. The first one I got was $15 off eBay and I, I no, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> was it the Blue Snowball you're talking about or the Blue Yeti? No, I didn't even mention that one. It was a lapel one. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there's yeah. yeah, I get questions about that kind of stuff a lot. People will say like, yeah, I found like this $15, $20 mic on Amazon and Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't recommend it, but yeah, cool. So it's, it's so tempting. Yeah, yeah. So this is really interesting. Partly, um, I mean, I'm not really an artist in terms of like painting or illustration. And actually, I didn't even ask you for our listeners what cor- what do you teach and what courses yeah. do you have? Uh, I teach watercolor illustration and mix that in with some design uh, because I I work traditionally. I'm, I'm looking around at my examples. Um, so I'll paint something and I'll scan it and, and work on it from there. Um, and I've kind of bebopped between painting and design. Uh, I find that screencasts are easy to do and hard to explain because I'm so used to using my shortcuts that, um, if I miss something, I I feel bad because I know how it feels to be lost in a tutorial Mm. and, you know, like what what did they just do right there? Are you screencasting? Are you doing your art in a specific program photoshop okay in photoshop okay so wait is most of your work in photoshop or are you actually hand lettering and doing watercolor i'll I'll like hand paint this scan it but then i'll i'll do the lettering on another sheet paste them together and all that's in photoshop so very cool oh that's very cool Nice. And so what was your process for coming up with your first topic and then kind of going forward? You mentioned like people will ask you questions and that gives you ideas, but do you do any other kind of validation or brainstorming to come up with course topics? Yeah. Um, My first class was design a watercolorful alphabet. So basically it was painting letters, scanning them and turning them into vectors. Uh, Mm. So you have an alphabet to work with and you don't have to write something every time you want to scan it. Uh, And it's not my favorite class because it's my first class. (laughs) It never is. (laughs) And so since then, um, how do I go about it? I just, I watch trend. You know, I think illustration is so huge on trend. Um, It's a love-hate relationship I have with it. Uh, I started out doing kind of a longer course called Make It Fun, Make It Sell. And that one was about the illustration industry. And I, and I told people how, how to get into it, what, you know, how to build a portfolio, that type of thing. And I think people still find that valuable. But it just uh, I find that showing technique has been more of my sweet spot, um, especially with watercolor being so trendy right now. When I started out on Skillshare, the only other instructor doing watercolor, there might have been a couple, but it was Katie Rogers, and she does fashion illustration, uh, which is very different from what I do. So um, I thought that it was a great place to start. But coming up with new class ideas, I'll usually have an idea I'm really excited about, start taking some videos to see if it's really going to take. It's not that hard for me to just paint at my desk and turn on the camera and worry about it later. Uh, but then... I'll, I'll, I'll get a suggestion and I'll think, Oh, that's, that's a great idea. I do like to bounce off my ideas with, um, my community on Skillshare, Mm, putting up a discussion post is great. Um, you know, people think that promoting your class comes after you launch it and it really happens two weeks before that. 
And uh, I found that I find the most traction when I tell people, hey, this is coming up. Uh, so it's not just this random email they get in their inbox and then they have to consider whether it's something that they want to do or not. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really cool. cool. I like that idea. Um, and one thing that I've done kind of similar is like s just actually send out an actual survey to my students and mm. say, hey, what are you interested in? Or like I, I'll have like a course topic and I'll send out a survey with like questions like, what do you expect to be in this course? So it's like a very subtle way of being like, mm. this course is coming yeah. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then That's I know, great. then I know what to make it about and what stu will make students happy. Um, yeah. Cool. So you've been on Skillshare. Have you had any thoughts about putting your courses on other platforms uh, yeah. yet? I've thought about it and it, my, it really just comes down to some sort of level of loyalty. And I don't. <laughs> I've heard that any. before. Yeah. I don't have any good reasons, right? I mean, especially when I hear, you know, oh, you could be making so much more or whatever. You could make more with the same content. But I don't know. Up till now, also my bandwidth with all that I've listed so far is, you know, just to stay on one platform. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I have a lot of people listening who are probably starting on Udemy and they're wondering how the whole Skillshare world works. And yeah. one thing I know about Skillshare is, yes, it's more for creatives. The courses are, tend to be shorter than on Udemy. They tend to be more project focused. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what ways have you found the most, like what are your most successful courses or any advice for mm -hmm. like either the production of your courses or just the course outlining or yeah. ideas that works well on Skillshare? I can I can offer what I know about Skillshare, and you can fill in the gaps about what Udemy is like. Perfect. Um, my understanding of Udemy is that it could be your class could be about a million things, which I think Skillshare is trying to push to, um, but they tend to fall in certain niches, right? Um, with Skillshare, the I think the classes that work the best are the ones where you can translate whatever you're learning into your workplace, your side hustle, or your main job. And so even if it's a small technique, if it's a small tutorial, I think it'll do well because people are looking for something to supplement their knowledge. And uh, if you're at a full-time job that works as, you know, paid learning time. So that's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and my whole thing with sound was coming to terms with realizing that a lot of people that are taking my classes are actually listening with their headphones while they're at work. And I think that might be part of the Skillshare culture. Um, it's also project based, which I'm sure you know you've talked about a lot already. So if it's something that you can show, have something to show for, especially right away, if it's brainstorming ideas, if it's sketches or whatever, that really helps the momentum of the class. Uh, and I'm a big believer that it's all about the cover shot, so mm. the cover image for your class. I haven't heard. Yeah, that's something I actually haven't talked to anyone about. Um, mm. So what advice do you have for great cover images? I always like to show um, basically this is what you could do if you took this class. Right. So uh, if uh, my most popular class is uh, watercolor florals three ways. I think it's popular for one because of the cover, cover Im image. But the other is that there are three styles. So you feel like you're taking three classes in one. And, uh, and I show all three styles in that cover image. Mm, yeah, I'm looking uh, at it right now. It's pr yeah. really nice. It's pretty. It's yeah. really pretty, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I totally have to embrace my girliness no, in that's great. Uh, a lot of the things that I teach. <laughs> but um, that one in the faces class, expressive little faces, was really popular. And uh, with that one as well, I think I have 30 mini portraits on just that cover image. Uh, and I think that people have to, you know, want to click on it. So nice. I really put some time on that. And that, yeah, that class specifically. So it's, uh, I see that's 35 minutes long. Do you go through each individual face in that class? Nope. No. I only do about four. Okay, cool. Uh, but it's just kind of like while, a style. Yeah, I, I broke it down into um, proportions and uh techniques and what to focus on. And then when you don't get into painting, I think until session seven or eight towards the end. Got it. Cool. So yeah. what about launching your courses on Skillshare? You mentioned that you kind of hint at 
courses, upcoming courses to get people yep. aware of them. But once you actually launch a course, do you promote it within Skillshare or what are you doing with your own brand to promote your courses? I, I wait a little bit to promote it on Skillshare. I know that all the people that are my followers on Skillshare get an email. I think it's at 14,000 something. And so all these people get an email. I'm not going to bombard them with another email saying, hey, I created this class that you already know about. Um, but I'll follow it up maybe a week later or at the end of the week. Um, and so that's the promotion I do there. I build up uh, on Instagram. I'll even show a little snippet of the video. I, I like to show like my screw ups. Um, because talking heads are so awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's always something. Um, one, there was a fly flying around, and you see me on camera. I get really ticked <laughs> off about that fly. And um, I'm always flipping my hair or something and like, okay, all right, ready, or that kind of thing, uh, yeah. just to personify it. Because um, I, I really do think that people kind of buy into you as a person, which is why online teaching is so... Um, diverse, mm. uh, several teachers can teach the same thing, but you just kind of follow a certain person's style and you kind of latch onto that. That's, yeah, that's really important. And I think for listeners to hear, because now even compared to just a few years ago, it's much more competitive in the sense there's mm -hmm. already a ton of content out there. Uh, yeah. But I always tell people like, it's okay if there's other courses on your thing. If you want to start teaching watercolor painting, you, you still have a great yeah. chance for success because you're teaching it in a certain way, people connect with you. Are you enjoying this episode? We hope you're learning to become a better course creator. If you want to fast track your success, get the free seven step guide to success at onlinecoursemasters.com. Now let's get back to the show. I'm on your Instagram right now. It's awesome. I see this late uh, recent post of a, a sea otter, which I think is my spirit animal. Um, <laughs> and that's my first sea otter. I should do more than that. Nice. Yeah. So what's your Instagram strategy right now? How often are you posting <clears throat> any other tips for growing a, an Instagram account? Yeah, I treat my Instagram account like it was my website. Uh, so, uh, I think that a lot of people don't get as far as going to my website. They'll just check out my Instagram, mm. especially, you know, art directors. So I'm, I'm looking to attract them and I will post once a day. Uh, usually sometimes I'll take a day off. Sometimes I'll post four times in the day. Um, but I don't do more than four cause that would be way too much. Right. <laughs> um, and I get the most feedback, the most response from videos, which the thumbnail doesn't look awesome because the resolution is low, but I think they're just more appreciated. I, yeah, I, my tips for Instagram would be just to kind of like stalk yourself like anyone else would. So you, we always think of, you know, my last post was like this or my last post was like that. But if you're constantly looking at just like your profile, mm -hmm. I like to see how things kind of interact and am I getting a full picture? As an illustrator, I want uh, art directors to see what I can do. They don't know what I can do if I don't do it and show it. And so um, I'll be like, well, okay, is there a face? Is there an animal? I want to be able to show the versatility there. And uh, it's, it's kind of hard because sometimes I'll want to show – something that I think looks great in person. And when I take a picture of it, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I, I would say I have not found a lot of success with creating images that are done digitally, like, um, a lot of text. So it totally looks like an ad. I think that the culture of Instagram is more personal than that. And, and, and people don't want to be sold to. Mm -hmm. So they just want to feel like you're their friend and they have this cool artist or video producer friend that they can check in on from yeah. time. Cool. Cool. And are you, um, batch producing anything or are you just coming up with these every day drawing something? Uh, yeah. If I feel like, yeah, I already shared this today. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day. I'll just kind of have it ready for, to go for the next day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, they, I think they go straight to Twitter, which I have mixed feelings about, but, um, I wish I had the time to do separate posts for, different social media platforms but for right now i just use if not if this then that ifttt yeah to automate a lot of that okay cool how does that i've heard of that but how does that yeah. work it, it's great so um 
the premise of that website is if this, then that. So if I post to Instagram, then it posts to Twitter. So one action automates another. If I get a new follower, then it's added to my Google spreadsheet. And there's like all these different, they call them recipes uh, that you can use. Mm. And they go from, you know, just more productive living to creative things to automating emails and things like that. Got it. Um, and is that a free out. free service or do you have to it pay is for free. it? Okay. It is free. Cool. It's not for everything, but it's, you know, it's got Pinterest and Evernote and things like that that, you know, they're handy. Yeah. Are you speaking of Pinterest, are you working on building an audience there as well? I haven't been working on it that much, although I have noticed that I really should because um I, I I noticed that, like I said, that florals class is really popular, and lo and behold, on Pinterest, it's the only one that's actually caught fire. So um, I've heard that from Omar Wynn, who's another uh, illustrator instructor on Skillshare. She's kind of newer to the game, but she is just all on board with Pinterest. So cool. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, Everybody's got their thing. Yeah, seriously. So yeah. cool. And I'm on your website, which is also very pretty. It shows off all your great work. <laughs> it's it's re- it's really designed nicely. I mean, it's perfect for what you're trying to convey. Um, in terms of getting people to your courses, you have the link at the top. Has mm-hmm. this been successful or have you tested out different ways to get people from your site to your courses? Uh, recently, I've put out a a class that I felt was a bit of a, not a backtrack, but it's a basics class. And I felt like my followers probably aren't as interested in a basics class, but it's kind of something that, um, a newbie coming in in January, which is, uh, the busiest time on Skillshare would want to see. And so I made, uh, I created a bunch of free passes for it and I put it on my Facebook. And whenever I'm on Facebook, since these are people that I actually do know, I, I try to not be salesy. I um, I just basically want to say, hey, friends, family, if you want in on this class that I did, here you go. Mm-hmm. And and that created a lot of shares, uh, at least a dozen shares. And um, and that really, I think, helped me gain a new audience mm-hmm. um, because whether they, you know, took the class or not or whatever, you know, th- there was that sharing and you, you just never know how exponential that'll be. So that was my latest experiment with advertising other than just or marketing other than just uh, letting the people that know me know that I'm doing something. Yeah. So. so that was on Facebook. Is that you said, was that on your personal Facebook or do you have an, a group or a I page have, for your business? Yeah. I have a page and then I just shared it from the page. So I, into my personal timeline. Got it. So Very- I got both. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. And on your website, you've got uh, an opt-in for your email mailing list. Uh, so how are you treating your email subscribers? That's probably my weakest area for sure. Uh, I, um, yeah, I, I've made my email list more focused on art directors and not so much, um, let's say Etsy buyers or class attenders and rollers. Right. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to partition that. I think I need to buy more email addresses. Am I right? So that I can create different newsletters mm. for different groups. Mm. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. What, ser- what service yeah. are you using for your, your emails? Are they just coming from your personal account? Yeah, I'm, I'm using Wix. Okay. Oh, cool. So. Is that what your website's on Wix? It is. Cool. Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> is this a, is it a, and for people listening, I'll include links in the, the blog article, but, uh, watercolor yeah. Devo is the website. Was this mm-hmm. a template that you use? Uh, yes, it is. Cool. Uh, you know, like the, the template's usually a grid. And if you explore a little more, you get some more shape options. And I have a hexagon kind of pattern on right now. So it looks like a hive. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is really exciting. So I got a question. I don't know if you can answer, but in, where where's your uh, where's your life going in the next few years? Especially with online courses, do you have any plan or yeah. or goals for the next few years with them? I have some ideas. Um, so, and Phil, you could probably tell me better than I know, but 
I'm not real sure if online teaching is going to be my long-term uh, game. I, I just, you know, you see people rise and fall. And, and so it's kind of nice to have these different balls to juggle uh, because of that. Uh, but I do know that I would like to teach more about how I do what Watercolor Devo was or is. So Watercolor Devos are a term that I kind of made up um, from doing watercolor paintings during my Christian devotion time. And so sometimes mm -hmm. it would be a Bible verse and sometimes it would be just a blotch. But I'm just kind of like sinking something in uh, with paint and, you know, while well, it's, you know, sinking into my heart. And I've gotten requests to teach on that. And I'm not real sure that Skillshare is the right place for that. Uh, so I've thought about hosting that on my website and that's maybe something that I'd like to do down the road. Um, but for right now, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I would love for Skillshare to be a long-term uh, game for online teaching to be a, a gig that I, I stick to and, um, well, something I've been surprised like I can do. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't think it would stick. Yeah, that so. I mean, for me, it's I've always kind of been surprised at how online teaching has turned out. And yeah. even as it continues to grow and it's it's almost consistently grown since I started in 2012, oh. which is amazing. Um, it's I still feel like, OK, if this last for another six months that's gonna be amazing because uh -huh. these, these platforms are so so new and yeah. then I also th sit back and I think do, can I really imagine myself creating video courses in 20 years and it's hard for me to imagine that um, mm -hmm. but at the same time I feel like uh, both of us are setting us uh, ourselves up for success uh, in whatever we want to do. And we're building a brand for ourselves and a portfolio for ourselves with all kinds of work. And And I, I think both of us and everyone who does this for a while learns so much about business and um, yeah. promoting things that we could transfer this into other areas. Um, mm -hmm. So So I think there's definitely room for growth, though, especially, you know, if you do want to put your courses on Udemy or your own platform, that, that definitely is a viable option. Um, with Udemy, I've talked to other people who started on Skillshare. Yes, it is like a different game. You, you're, the courses that do better are more full. They're longer. It's not mm -hmm. one particular skill, but if you create like a general watercolor design or illustration course that would probably mm -hmm. do better on Skillshare or on Udemy rather. And you might have the content already that you could kind of package together. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I totally get the brand loyalty. Uh, and it's kind of how I feel about Udemy. It's like, I started on Udemy, so I don't want to like go away from Udemy and put my content mm -hmm. elsewhere. But at the end of the day, you are your, the content owner of all your courses. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. within the rules for you to post your courses elsewhere. Um, yeah. So yeah. I hope Skillshare lasts a long time. Um, mm -hmm. But if Skillshare, for some reason, starts to decrease, uh, then there's other platforms to, to try out too. Yeah. And honestly, my lack of faith is not in Skillshare, but more in me. Uh, and I don't mean that to, I don't know, be down on myself, but it's just that I, I see myself follow certain people and be excited about their work and, and their style. And then you, you grow and you move on and you think, okay, I, now this one is looking cool to me and I want to learn from them. And there's nothing that says that new people can't join while, you know, old folks are moving on. Uh, I just think like, okay, if I'm doing a class every six weeks or so, golly, how many classes is that going to be in <laughs> two to three years, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. Maybe they'll be less frequent. Maybe they'll just be meatier. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do want to say I, I don't want to give off the misnomer that I went from one cool career to another and things have always been rosy. Honestly, Skillshare has been like a, like an opening of the clouds for me. Uh, for a good two years, we were really scraping by and, um, you know, we were a young family and there's only so much I can do without, you know, balancing, okay, well, how much is childcare versus me working, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I was just, just coming into my own again creatively. And so I didn't want to be at a nine to five. 
Um, and that, that was, a that was a tough time. And I did a lot of stabs in the dark and I think that that's totally okay. You know, as long as there's like an end to, to that, if there's like an end game, if, you know, if by this time next year, this isn't picking up, you know, it's really time for me to get real and reassess, right? You don't want to get caught in some sort of a dreamer stage where you're starving your family for it. But, um, I do just want to make that clear that, you know, I think that we listen to these interviews and they're so exciting and inspiring, but your story is your own. So there might be something that you resonate from everyone's story or from none of them, because everyone's going to find something, their, their niche somewhere. Mm, yeah. I think that's important for people to hear. And, um, I, I can't promise that everyone's going to have success in this, mm -hmm. in this business with your first, second, third, fourth, third, or fifth online course. I sure. found that most people who do stick with it have some sort of success. Uh, but I also don't want to give false hope to people. Um, yeah. speaking of, uh, Skillshare, this episode is probably going to come back, uh, come, come out live, uh, in a couple months after the change. But do you have any thoughts about the change in pricing and have you calculated yeah. how that might affect your, your earnings? I haven't seen a change in my earnings. Like with the last three or four months have been very consistent, uh, very good, but, uh, I really do wish that I could predict it better. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it totally depends on how well Skillshare does that month, how much you get paid out. Mm -hmm. um, it's proportionate. And so there is no like, you know, I could track how many minutes are watched and that impacts my payout, but I'm not sure what to multiply that against. Yeah, we still every don't month. know. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's a little unnerving, but I know that with time, I guess you just figure out kind of an average. Yeah. That's the hard thing about Skillshare. And that's probably the worst part about it is like, you're waiting till like the 15th of every month to yeah. see how much you get paid. Totally. And, uh, <laughs> and I think maybe after a few months of the new system where they're tracking per minute, um, we might have a better sense of like, on average, if it's going to be eight cents per minute or nine cents per minute or whatever, because I think they said it's a range between, I forget what it was, five and 10 or seven and 12 or something I like that. I think it was 10 last month. Yeah. So. so maybe we'll see if it's a little bit more consistent, but that's why it's somewhere like you to me. It sounds so weird, right? 10 yeah. cents a minute. I know, right? <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, it's hard to like, compared to like putting your stuff on YouTube, it's a, it's a really good payout. But on the other hand, when you put your stuff on your own site or on Udemy, you kind of know exactly Right. how much you're going to make, um, because you can see and track earnings by the yeah. minute basically. And there's some other people who I'm interviewing that you're going to be interested in listening to because they're in sort of similar fields and mm. they're selling their courses on their own site. Um, mm. so, and they're having a lot of success with that. And it doesn't take too much work to set it up with a site like Teachable or Thinkific, um, mm -hmm. and just link out to your, your courses on your own site. So it might be mm -hmm. something to look into. So do you have any last piece of advice for someone who does want to get started and they're mm -hmm. a little bit hesitant um, about Skillshare or just online courses in general? What, what, what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to define what exactly you are having some trepidation about. Um, because I think a lot of times you hear, especially if you're doing freelance, your friends and family are just like, oh, you should try this. This person did really well with that. Oh, you should try that. And you should approach these people. And it's like so much input, right? Um, but if you're seriously concerning, uh, considering teaching online, you know, what is it that's holding you back exactly? For me, it was, well, I don't know that I'm really that big of a deal for people to want to hear what I'm saying and what I'm teaching. So that's why I taught something that I was like, I know how to do this and I'm going to start with this little bite-sized tutorial because I know that, you know, people ask me questions or whatever. They're not going to be looking at who do you think you are teaching me how to create vectors. I mean, I, I can do that. <laughs> I can, I can vouch for that. So, um, if, if that's it, if it's like, uh, you know, having the right stuff, the right supplies, the right computer or whatever, um, then remove that boulder. And once you start breaking down 
those boulders and you realize what's really going on and if it's for you or not. Um, you hear it a lot, you know, just take the first step and it, and I can understand that it's scary. Um, but you do learn a lot from failing too. So there's that, right? Yeah, I completely agree. I think a lot of people get caught up on the technical things or mm -hmm. yeah, not feeling confident enough to just put themselves out there, but yeah. you just got to do it. Just put it out there, make mistakes and, and learn and yeah. try to get better. That's what I've done. And some of my best reviews are not about how good I am at what I do. It's, um, I remember someone recently said, I feel like you just came over to my house and painted alongside with me and you're my encouraging buddy, you know, and I thought, rock on, that's, 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 that's perfect. about right. Um, <laughs> so if I'm going for that, you know, I don't have to be some hotshot with credentials. I just have to care and teach enough. Absolutely. You want to be clear about what you're teaching because otherwise, what are we doing? But, um, yeah, I, we get so hung up on ourselves and it's, it's really about the students, right? So it's, I remember the feeling of discovering something because I watched somebody do it. And that's all I'm trying to do. Like, it just set that goal. Yeah. And uh, people, you know, they don't remember what you say, they remember how you make them feel. And, mm. and that's something that I, I try to remind myself. Um, so and I remember, too, posting a project and seeing that comment from a teacher in my email and like, oh, they saw it, you know, like I am seen, I exist. Uh, and that that means a lot. It's it's silly little things, but it's connecting and it's it's what we're how we're doing it now, really. So perfect. I think that's a great way to end this episode. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and I'm looking so much forward to seeing your success in the future for people Thanks. listening. Uh, we mentioned your website, but can you remind people how to find you if they're interested in your work or your courses? Yeah. My, um, my website's watercolor devo, D E V O.com. No spaces, no dashes. It's easier to spell than my name, Amaryllis, <laughs> which is uh, a flower, but it's spelled in Spanish and misspelt. So stick to Watercolor Devo. You'll find me on Instagram and Twitter and Periscope and Facebook and all those places. Awesome. Watercolor Devo. Amaryllis, yeah. it's been really fun chatting and yeah. I hope, hope the best for you. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Thanks. Had fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, there's no better way to learn how to create and sell online courses than heading over to OnlineCourseMasters.com and downloading your free seven-step guide to success. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show wherever you listen and make sure to leave a rating. If you do, I might even read it on a future show. Help us reach our first 100 ratings. It'll just take one extra minute of your time. Thanks. Have a beautiful day and we'll see you next week on the next episode.